Let's get physical. It's Jordan here, back again with this week's update and all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the second week of November, November 9th until the 13th, Monday to Friday. Retail, low print, and imports, plus our community spotlight where you show off your pickups and potentially win a physical Switch game. Let's take a look. Sukuna of Rice and Ruin is the latest game from Marvelous that mixes farming with action platforming. Juan's got a review coming up for this one, and he's already done a nice little preview for it if you want to check that video out. But let's just say that this doesn't look like it's going to disappoint. There's a couple of editions for this one, a standard release of course, but North America and Europe have their ever so slightly different collector's editions. The Golden Harvest edition exclusive to Marvelous Store in Europe has a 3 CD soundtrack, art book and a double sided poster. The Divine edition in North America has those things minus the posters but includes an Omimari charm or whatever that is. And this is Brent McLean's and God of Resin's pick of the week. Funbox Media's quality is on show with a release that they have this week, at least for Europe, and an absolute quality re-release of Chicken Range. This time bundled with a piece of plastic to stick your joint coins in and pretend you've got a gun. I know this was released previously, but I feel it's such a high-profile reprint, I needed to tell you guys about it so you don't miss out on the quality here. I do know that this is releasing in North America too, just not sure if it's this week or later. Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory is releasing this week. It's a rhythm action game based on the music for the Kingdom Hearts series, which to some fans is considered absolutely magical. I'm not a fan of the series, I've never played them, but I do love a good rhythm game, and so this is right up my alley. I'm probably the only person on earth who was happy to see this announcement rather than like a proper Kingdom Hearts game. Saying that though, I have been hovering over the all-in-one package Kingdom Hearts bundle for the PS4 so many times. Now that I would like on the Switch at some point. And this is Ganicus's and Dane Wilkinson's Pick of the Week. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit is getting its remastered release on the Switch on the 13th. According to the blurb, cross-platform multiplayer, all the DLC and enhanced visuals are the order of the day. I'll tell you that this has got me more excited than the recent Burnout Paradise, so I might actually give this one a try. Uh, I think it could be one of the best arcade racing experiences on the system. If you need any more suggestions, check out Juan's video on that very subject. And this is Jonathan Rumor's Pick of the Week. If that's too high profile for you, then perhaps take a look at Speed 3 Grand Prix. While the quality may not be the highest, it looks to be you know one of the few options for F1 fanatics out there on the Switch. I can't think of any others to be honest. Do let me know if you can think of any. Uh, it's been about 10 years since I was a big fan of the sport, but you know I'm kind of interested in this, even though I know it's probably you know going to be fairly mediocre. If anyone does pick this one up, do let me know what you think of the game. My Universe Cooking Star Restaurant. The legendary series continues. Once again, no trailer was on offer, so we've only got the screenshots to go by, and you can probably guess the quality of this one from that alone. Ubisoft is bringing the shovelware to the States with the latest release of Family Feud. Classic game show, of course, but you know, maybe not the best translation to a video game. I don't know. Uh, I'm guessing this is US only since, you know, it would be called Family Fortunes over in the UK. UK people, import this one if you want to answer questions about, you know, the Super Bowl and Thanksgiving and stuff. Professor Rubik's Brain Fitness looks to be a cash-in of Mr. Rubik's greatest invention and one of the banes of my childhood, the Rubik's Cube. God, I hate these. Every time I see one, I can feel it like sneering at me, calling me dumb. Anyways, prepare to take part in mini games that are designed to give your brain a workout. Well, that's what they say anyways. <laughs> Science, this is not. Just Dance 2021 continues powering onwards with sequels that get ever slightly more apathy as the years go by. They certainly don't sell like they used to, but you know, it must be easy money for Ubisoft to pump them out, you know, in time for Christmas. Uh, this one includes 40 new hot tracks, so I'm told. Now, I don't like to mention codes in boxes too much, but on Amazon UK, apparently there's a flood of them this week. So quickly for those who want, you know, the boxes, uh, World of Solitaire, Classic, Street Outlaws, The List, Harvest Life, that's not a knockoff at all, My Riding Stables, nice, Rapala Fishing, 3D Mini Golf, and even Ghostbusters, believe it or not. All of these are codes in the box and are on Amazon UK if you want to check those out. Okay, the Low Prince Premium Edition games are putting up their second release up for order on November 10th. Uh, they had Super Blood Hockey, a decent enough start, but now we have the Pigeon Dev Collection. This is a four-in-one package of cheap, cheerful games. Awesome P1, 
to Bucket Knight and Explosive Jake. None of them would ever, ever need an individual physical release. Uh, just don't look at Play Asia's beta releases. <laughs> uh, but together, together, uh, you know what? It's fine, I guess. Uh, there's a standard edition, a retro edition, plus a premium edition, which is a hundred dollars <coughs> for the game. Uh, Steam box, NES style box, CD soundtrack, pin, big box, trading card, and strategy guide. Perhaps a little overboard for the games on offer here, but hey, at least they're trying. And you know, it's nice to see some like mini indie love. Super Rare Games once again have embargoed an announcement, meaning that I can't actually tell you what it is. Here is a blurred out box art for it. <laughs> I hope they don't nuke me. Uh, thankfully, it's much better than Monster Prom this time around, at least in my opinion. Stay tuned to their social media channels for the announcement on Monday, uh, later after this episode, I guess. Uh, the big clue for this one has been the word King. Uh, you know, just run with that theme on the Switch, you know, in a game. Yeah, you'll easily guess what it is, I'm sure. Uh, Personally, I thought way, way over the top with that clue. You know, after Juan's review of Jurassic World Evolution, my brain thought of Rex, which, you know, like T-Rex. And Rex in Latin means king. And I thought I was Sherlock or something, but no, it's not Jurassic World. Be prepared for 4,000 copies of a decent enough game. It's decent. Yeah, I think so. All right, let's jump into the imports this week. Just remember that if any takes your fancy and you'd like to import them for yourself, then there are import links below in the description and pinned comment. It helps support the series absolutely massively. It helps us keep us going so much. It wouldn't be here without you and your support. You guys are amazing. Also, now may be a good time to get your order in since this week is Play Asia's 18th birthday. The site is now old enough to drink in the UK. And as a celebration, they're having a site-wide special. Free air mail shipping on pretty much everything. Obviously, it has to be under a certain weight and it doesn't include their Play Asia exclusive titles, but be sure to click the link below in the description and pin comment to check out what they have to offer. Now is the best time to order if you don't like the shipping costs. That's always the biggest problem for most people is the shipping costs. So with free ML shipping, now is the time. But don't forget, there may still be import tax, especially if you live in Europe. US people, you pretty much always get away with that, so you don't have to worry. And you can save even more with our discount code switch watch tv while checking out that's all one word switch watch tv and you can get five percent off your order and that free air mail shipping all right let's check out this week as i said not a lot medarot is getting two releases in japan this week medarot classics plus kuwagata version and the kabuto version i hope that's nothing to do with pokemon uh each have six games i believe they kind of look the same i'm not entirely sure what the difference is to be honest as i've never played the series before but i assume it's like pokemon Pokemon, like one's red, one's blue kind of thing. Maybe. Uh, you can even get them in a double pack too. Sadly, there is no English on these, which is a damn shame because I would definitely have bought these to give them a try. Pio Fiore no Bansho Episodio 1926 is getting released in Japan this week. Probably no English, but I assume a Western release will come along at some point if Axis games have anything to do with it. All right, let's jump into the Let's Get Physical Community Spotlight where you shop your pickups. If you're featured, then at the end of this month, you could be in with the chance to win a physical Switch game. I still haven't decided yet. I had a quick browse like, before recording this, but I'm like, you know, I've, I've got to get on making this episode. So uh, I'll hopefully tell you next week. Uh, firstly, me. Oh boy, do I have a piece of something rather special for you this week. I cannot resist a cheap ass game, especially one that looks as terrible as this one. Panda Hero is one of the biggest pieces of garbage that the Switch has to offer. A masterpiece of sh sugar, uh, the creme de la crap of Switch physicals, honestly, irredeemable in every sense of the word, which means I just had to get it and show it off to you guys. Only Europeans were cursed with this physical game, uh, and it may not say Funbox Media on the front, but it sure as hell does on the back, as though even they are a little ashamed of it, you know, which is saying something. I've seen this a couple of times in the community spotlight uh thankfully not too often but you know there's always been a wince every time i've seen it with just a little bit of jealousy you know it's a crappy platformer with the cheapest production value you've ever seen horrendous art style awful mechanics it easily stands proud as the worst game in my collection only buy this if you've got serious problems like myself links are below for you my kin uh maybe you can order it next week with uh, the release of waifu uncovered for a double dollop of detritus 
Right, we've had a bit of a backlog since last week's episode, so I'm going to rush through some of these, I'm sure you'll understand. And since there were so many double entries to stop it being an organisational nightmare, uh, we're going to go in alphabetical order this week. Adam Karaskulo was one of many to pick up Cadence of Hyrule these past few weeks, still waiting for Payday before I picked mine up. Adam Hay picked up a double pack that I'm very interested in, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. Yes, they are super retro, but there's something about them that makes me, you know, just want to try them out. I've never played them before. I love and Jojo, many many thanks for using our code and links for Moro Crystal H. It helps us out so so much. There's also layers of fear from Limited Run, one of their earlier ones, not seen too often these days. Anaheim Rookie picked up these games recently. Awesome to see the North American variant of Finding Teddy 2 from VGNY. Looks great. Art Phoenix Assort is sent in these. Little Busters there on the right, an import exclusive, excellent visual novel. Has English, which is also very nice. Boombox got in some fine games. Nice to see Blackbird and Elliot Quest, a very recent release. Anybody from Europe importing this one? Kanak added these two limited run releases to their collection. Can't go wrong with Shantae. Captain Slogan in some wonderful games, Crosscode and Super Robot Wars V. I really hope you enjoy the awesomeness that that game has to offer. Champ Dancer got in Kunai, distributed by Limited Run in North America. Very nice cover art. Chew it sent in these four games, including three from Red Art Games. I have Hover and My Memory of Us in my collection. Choco Loco James got in the collector's edition of the Asian version of Neo Geo Sam Show Collection, which looks a little similar to Picks and Loves, but missing a few things. Still, it looks gorgeous. Love the artwork for the shock box. Um, I'm sure that's a, the reversible cover on it, maybe. It's sweet. Chuck's Taylor sent in this picture of some heavy duty pickups, still seeing a lot of printy. I think even NIS America are surprised at how well that sold. Craig Morgan sent in these photos, including that awesome Luigi's Mansion 3 figurine from First Four Figures. Man, they are so expensive, but they put out some quality stuff. Crit Cat, uh, I hope you had a good birthday, and what a way to celebrate them with such a crazy happy game like Katamari Damacy. Dark King Cooper sent in this photo including the lovely edition of Untitled Goose Game uh, with that even more minimalistic cover art. Enigma sent in this photo including the recent Pikmin as well as showing off the awesome reversible cover of Hardcore Mecha. Looks belting. E Rock Z sent in this photo, some recent games in there. That big box of asterisks and obelix is insane. Flower Angel Rave showed off some snazzy games. Great to see uh, a Peggy Sayonara Wild Hearts. Definitely have no excuse not to pick this one up now. Fluttershout sent in these photos, uh, and they were especially pleased to show off their Japanese version of Shantae Seven Sirens, which looks great and came with some pins as well. Uh, anyone else importing this one? It's nice if you missed the limited run one for sure. I'm definitely getting it at some point. Flyro got in the collector's edition of Ease Origin, distributed by Strictly Limited. So many editions of this great game. Executive producer Ganaka sent in these, uh, some nice pickups, plus as always, many thanks for using our Play Asia affiliate links for Grisaya Trilogy, a massive amount of visual novel content there, uh, the price is pretty high though. Gavin got in a couple of games, uh, I didn't think I'd see much in here, first sighting of Nickelodeon Racers 2 and Transformers Battlegrounds, check out James's review of that one. Executive producer got a resident in a triple threat of Super Rare and the fan gamer edition of Stardew Valley. The man, that cover art is proper full on. Goma sent in these games. Pikmin, very nice. Plus, brand new release in Tropico 6. Will be interesting to see how this is regarded on the Switch in the long term. Griffin, gonna assume you used our codes and links, so thank you kindly. Gigantic Army in there. It's been a while since we've seen that legend here. Plus, two more Switch essential imports. H&F got in a very super rare theme package and set it out nicely as always. So nice to see it all laid out like this. Harsh Varden Sapra sent in this photo of some fine Nicholas Love, including the very recent release of Dung Reed. Ike got in the very pleasant package from Limited Run, Mighty Switch Force and Vitamin Connection. Lovely colourful artwork as always from them guys. Jason got in Pikmin 3 and showed off the unbelievably relaxing inner artwork. Joel Parker got in the terrifying artwork of the Zombie Army Trilogy. I had no idea it was actually that scary. Kozai Hod showed off editions 118 to 123. Uh, you'll be past me in no time at all. Lars showed off the lovely looking Paper Mario, the inner artwork, and some lovely pins as well. Lucazone, sorry, I still don't know how to say your name properly, uh, showed off these pickups. It's been a while, so no wonder there's so many. Nice to see a lot of red art games in there. Remember, you guys can get 10% off anything from their website with S Watch 10. 
Marcos Blanco got in the chunky collector's edition of Vitamin Connection, plus Nino Kuni, which I heard was going super cheap in store at Best Buy recently. I'm not sure if it's still going on, but it was. It was like 10 bucks or something, which is crazy. Marty Mar picked up these fine releases. I am very jealous. I need both of these games for sure. Marion got in Shin Megami Tensei 3, the Japanese version. Sadly, no English, but Marion does know a thing or two about Japanese, so he's set. Plus, Colors Live Kickstarter pen, which he nicely drew a picture for us. Michael Wielczewski showed off the super obscure physical of Yono. The Belgian release has English on the front cover uh, for the title, like mine. Uh, I think if you want full English like included on the back cover as well, you'll want the Spanish version, I think. Either way, super, super obscure. And they sent in the absolutely wonderful and gorgeous Moon, exclusive to Japan, has English. What a fabulous game. Mine is on the way to the UK right now for safekeeping. I think PlayAsia just got some stock back in as well. So if you want it, go check that out. I'll put a link below. Don't miss out again. Neverbirth got in a lot these past weeks, including the borderline hilarious collector's edition of Penny Punching Princess, which is in the form of a gold bullion. That's genius. Night Crusade got in a mix of Aussie games and imports, including the essential Super Robot Wars and Phoenix Wright Trilogy. Hardcore mecha for those who don't want to wait like four or five months for the European version. Nintendo Gamer Gal got in some fine releases. Uh, I know it should be about the games really, but honestly, I need that Splatoon plushie. No Face, really appreciate it so much that you used our code and links for these three essential imports. Two Super Robot Wars, just you know, classic, plus the classy Moral Crystal H. Fit Stevens just wanted to make me jealous with the incredible Ikaruga. Uh, I'm waiting for the Japanese version to come down in price, if it ever does. And speaking of which, here's Pupkin showing off the full package. Punky Dooster, aside from collecting Switch games, also collects DS and 3DS games. Nice, I do love my 3DS. Retro Boy got in this triple threat, some quality releases all round. Retro Yoshi picked up the Prisoner Edition of Dead Cells, which is an absolute beast. Check out Juan's unboxing for a closer look at what's going on here, it's brilliant. It's rain time. Some fantastic imports here, including the Asian release of Shantae, plus a couple of top visual novel imports, uh, which, you know, you'll definitely need if you're into imports and visual novels. Tomoyo After and Yumiya Tsutsu. Rich Bergen sent in this surprise see Instant Chef Party. I do wonder if it's actually any good as a party game. Answers on a postcard, please. Rick Crawbert showed off these games, plus Inside Xeno Crisis, which looks phenomenal. Robert got in these games, including Wallachia, uh, which I really, really need in my collection after reviewing it. Fantastic artwork. I think the Euro version looks even better in the flesh. Roaring sent in these games. You don't see truck racing very often at all. These are the kind of releases that I'm never truly sure exist until you guys send in a picture for me. Severus sent in another Korean Steen Bok, this time one for Animal Crossing New Horizons. I had no idea Koreans were so big into Steen Boks, but you know, that's cool. Spawn 7 uh, was one of many to show off Cadence of Hyrule. Steven65 showed off a game that I have on my list, Caligula Effect, an RPG similar style to Persona. Obviously not as good, but I'm certainly intrigued. Streaming on the corner, got in these games, Book Bound Brigade, a Metroidvania style game. Uh, this physical is exclusive to Asia and Japan. It has English and is a damn fine game too. One worth considering if you're into importing. Switch Guy 42 said in three games, I definitely have on my list. I'm really curious about you know. I know it's probably not aged so gracefully, but damn, I want to try it. Tim Tencent in a couple of uh, obscure limited run releases. You don't see Mist and Shadowgate too often. Maybe they are actually somewhat, you know, limited. Totally Simon sent in these releases. Super rares, triple threat, plus the gorgeous Animal Crossing Switch. Transient Image didn't have a Switch game to show off, but uh, I have to thank you for using our code and links on these Play Asia exclusive Vita games. They showed off these fantastic releases. Lovely to see the premium sound edition of Carmen Rider. I really enjoyed reviewing it, even if it is definitely kind of like a, you know, 7 out of 10 kind of game. But it's still in really enjoyable. This Japanese release does have English, so is ripe for import. Visipon, many thanks for using our code, as always, to purchase Grisaya Trilogy, just like Gannicus. Ying picked up Jump Force. Still not heard too much about this. Is it decent on the Switch? Please let me know. 
Yo Daddy. Big thank you for using our links and code to pick up these two games. Little Nightmares is a great game, only released physically in Europe and Japan, one to import if you're in North America for sure. And finally, Yusha, who picked up some great games including Streets of Rage 4 Signature Edition, which is a nice piece of kit. Juan unboxed that for the channel, highly recommend you check it out. And that's it as always, I really enjoy seeing what you guys pick up. Please send me your pictures over on Twitter at so what about game. You can DM me or you can tag me in a post and use the hashtag let's get physical. I'll give you a nice little retweet too. Or you can email into us at contact us at switchwatch.co.uk. Just make sure you start the email title with community spotlight so I don't miss it. Plus we have a discord which is a nice way for us to have a chat with you guys and you can send your pictures in there in the submission section. If you want to join our Discord, the links are below in the description and the pinned comment probably too. Can I just ask that you only try to send in one picture per week? Unless it's an unboxing or something or like showing the interior artwork and stuff, that's fine of course. But you know, if you group all your games together, it just helps me out a lot if you put them in one picture. It just, you know, helps me organize and it makes editing a lot quicker. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of New Physicals. As you can hear, my voice is not very good at the minute. I've been really busy and really sick, but I hope you enjoyed it. Special thanks to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Gannicus, and Santa Tartaruga. Thank you ever so much, and all of the other members. Many thanks to you for watching. If you watched all the way here, you are an absolute legend. The longer you watch, the more it helps the channel grow. Honestly, YouTube loves it when you watch long videos. Uh, yeah, so please check out a couple of videos. Maybe check out last week's in case you missed it. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Take care.